What's up, it's Lalo. Today I'm super excited to introduce my first script and plugin combination for DAS Studio and Maya called Genesis 8 for Maya. So let me demonstrate what this plugin does. So let's say we have Genesis 8 here loaded in a screen in a scene and we want to send them over to Maya. So what we can do is we can dial them in and shape them how we'd, we want them to look in Maya. So I'm just going to dial in a couple of shapes here. Do a little bit of Owen, do a little Darius. And now if we want to include any other morphs and pose controls like expressions or anything like that, what we can do is we just favorite them and then they'll automatically be sent over with the figure. So I'm going to do fitness, we'll do bodybuilder, uh, throw in a couple of pose control expressions here. Maybe some fierce, glare happy uh, maybe another uh, some arm morphs here <clears throat> all right and now that we got a few things favorited and our character selected we just go up here to scripts genesis 8 for maya export genesis 8 base mail um, bring up the save dialog and you can just save him wherever you want name him where, where, whatever you want and so I'm going to go ahead and uh, save them as Genesis, Genesis 8 mail test. It's just let me know that I'm going to, over, going to overwrite the file. That's okay. So we just let the export thing do, do its thing here real quick. And then we go over to Maya. And then using the uh, Genesis 8 for Maya plugin, it'll add this menu up here. And then let's just import the Genesis 8 base mail. Um, I don't want to save the scene. It's going to create a new scene. It's just asking me if I want to save it. And then let's go ahead and find our file, which is here in uh, Genesis 8 to Maya. And then Genesis 8 mail test. Let's hit import. And then we'll give it a second while it does its thing. Depending on how many morphs you favor and how many clothing items and hair your character has, it'll kind of determine how long it takes to load this in. The more stuff, uh, the longer it'll take, basically. And then once it's done, we get this dialog box here where we can give the character its own special name. So I'm going to go ahead and name him uh, Jack. And then you have a couple options for renaming shader groups and renaming shaders. They just uh, makes the shaders and shading groups a little more distinguishable by default like the shading groups are coming as something like Genesis 8 Mel 1 SG Genesis 8 Mel 2 SG what this will do is it'll rename them as uh, if we specify a name it'll name it Jack um, Jack Torso SG or Jack Arms SG so it's a lot easier a lot more user friendly and easier to distinguish and then pretty much the same thing with the shaders instead of just being torso or face it'll be jack torso jack face so i'm going to go ahead and click yes and now we got our figure loaded in the scene and it automatically sets up human ik controls for us it renames the character uh it renames all the human ik effectors puts together the group for the character with the the main figure the eyelashes and then what other clothing items you may have uh, exported with the figure and now if you start moving the figure around you'll notice that uh, all the JCMs are automatically working uh, the flexion morphs you can see is calf flex and to sh kind of show you a little bit more clearly if we bring open our shape editor here <coughs> You'll see that all the JCMs and flex morphs have been exported with the character and they're already set up to follow or be driven by the uh, all the joints. Let me open this up here a little bit better so you can see. And then I also made them so that they get organized. So we have all our joint control morphs in one group, all the flex morphs in another group, all the expressions and pros controls come in their own group. And so let me kind of show you how these work. So you can see that the calf is in the hamstrings are flexed uh, just from, you know, the position of his legs right now. So it does all that automatically for you. And then you can see that the joint control morphs basically do the same thing. We start moving his leg around. 
kind of see them like the thigh forward and all that stuff. And then another cool thing, say if we start down an expression on him, you'll see that the eyelashes automatically conform to the shape in this. They're, so they're basically set to auto follow. If that wasn't the case, you'd have to go into the eyelashes and set the happy morph to exactly whatever, you know, you have the figures happy morph set at. And then it's the same thing with all the clothing items. They get set up the same way. So say if we dial in some bodybuilder, you'll notice that the shorts automatically get their bodybuilder morph setting set as well. And then just to kind of show you the what the the shader set uh, checkboxes do. If we open our hyper shade, takes a second here. All right, you'll see that they're all named by the uh, the name of the shape and then the name of the shader or uh, textures basically. So we got the boxer, two boxer shaders, we got the eyelash shaders, and then all the figure shaders. And then if you graph one of these out you'll see that the shading group is also named congruently. So it makes it a lot easier to set up all your shading networks for whatever your favorite render engine is. Another kind of cool thing that I did is I actually made this compatible in such a way with uh, Daz to Maya where you can actually um, use its convert shaders tools. So like say if you want to use it to convert the shader to V-Ray or Arnold, you can actually still do that. What you do is just when you bring in that, when that initial rename, uh, character rename box comes up, all you have to do is just uncheck the rename shading groups and uncheck rename shaders. You can still give them a specific name if you want. And then you just run Das to Maya's convert shader tools. And then when that's all done, if you want to still have the shaders renamed and the shading groups renamed, you just come back up to G8 for Maya. And then you do rename shading groups. And then rename shaders. And it'll uh, kind of get the best of both worlds. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check it out in the DAS store and I hope you find this plugin useful. Let me know if there's any other features or anything like that you'd like to see added or any other kind of plugins you'd like to see.